I'll skip the very difficult uh, years of the war, except to say that uh, I left Poland completely unexpectedly at uh, less than 24 hours notice. Uh, a, a lady came to my parents and said that uh, tomorrow she was going to Switzerland and uh, if they agreed uh, she would take me in the group of people uh, that uh, were going to join. Uh, she was in charge of uh, allied pilots and other per if, a a aircraft personnel who got shot over Germany and these people were encouraged to migrate into Poland where the Polish Home Army would uh, take care of them. And taking care of them meaning, meant that uh, they would be assembled and then uh, they would be uh, manufactured false German passports and essentially shipped to Switzerland by a complicated deal. Uh, these kind of avenues of escape uh, weren't lasting too long. Maybe six months, the Gestapo, the, the German Gestapo would, of course, try to trace it. And from Warsaw and from many probably other countries in Europe, there were these routes of uh, going to Sweden or Switzerland or Turkey or somewhere like this. And this Mrs. Mrs. Sobkiewicz, who was a friend of my parents, they didn't know what she was doing, uh, came and said, uh, tomorrow I'm going on a trip to Switzerland. And uh, if you agree that, uh, uh, that uh, your son goes, and I was what then, 15 plus maybe 16. And I was a friend of her son, Leszek. And it's he who suggested to mother, let's take Ted with us. There were five children, and I think in the party there were about 15 other people, most of them Canadians and Americans, pretending to be German. And uh, we went actually in a German military train, uh, carrying the wounded from the, the Eastern Front. So overnight I, be I became Hans Obermoser, that was my German name. I, I was supposedly born in Kiev and I was one of the German escapees as the Red Army was moving in. It was all false. To cut again a long story short, it didn't work that way. In other words, when we got to, we got very close to the German, to the Swiss frontier, and there was a, a kind of an estate run by the Germans in Austria on the Lake Constance, Bodensee, which was about a couple of miles from Swiss frontier. And the Gauleiter, the German ruler there, um, uh, was purchased by the allies on the other side. And so he attracted people who arrived pretending that they were kind of recruited farm workers. And then when the opportunity arose, they were shipped across the small bridge one of the estuaries of the river Rhine to Switzerland. However, by the time, very soon after we arrived there, the Gestapo already knew. And so uh, there was a raid one night and uh, uh, people got arrested. I escaped into the fields uh, and had a confrontation with my friend who had four other younger sisters confrontation in a sense that we tried to decide what to do and he said, you go and I'll stay. And so I crossed to Switzerland overnight uh, under a bridge <laughs> and got on the other side to, uh, uh, as a young boy, together with a couple of Frenchmen whom I encountered during that uh, night march towards the frontier. Later on, years later, I visited that area and the local people couldn't believe that I could have done it because the, apparently the one mile of the land was mined. And so I went over these mines. <laughs> you had no idea. No idea. Just no.